keep up to date with our latest videos, please hit the subscribe button below. Hello, welcome to this video on draw bias. I've navigated to the data dashboard on the Racing Bet Data website. And for the purpose of the video, I've, um, I've excluded all tracks apart from uh, the two all weather tracks from Dundalk and Wolverhampton. And everything else has been left as default apart from I've selected the, the last three years. So we only added in the, the stall or trap or draw, whatever you want to call it. We only added in that data around uh, March 2019 after several member requests. So we don't actually have the draw data further back in time than that, but we do, as I said, have now over two years worth of data and I've exported that to Excel. So here in Excel is the, um, is the exported data. And what I've done is apply filters across the top and then I've removed any uh, NA or blank stall data where we don't have the information for those races, as I said, prior to uh, March 2019. <clears throat> I've also removed data from the 18th of May 2021, which is today uh, for Dundalk, as those races haven't yet happened. So I don't have the results. So those are not in the output. Now, from the data source here, what I've done is create these four tabs which are all very similar and they all use a pivot table so the first one we're looking at runners so this is a simple pivot table where we've got the track down the left then we've got the number of runners we've got the stall across the top and then we've got the returns from betfair sp so immediately you can see here where there's a pattern of red or black clusters where there may be um, indicating to you that there might be a, an, an angle, a profitable angle regarding the, the actual draw that the, the horse comes out of. So you can see on the top here, Dundalk, we're looking straight away at traps 9 through to 12. They're profitable. Um, and with Wolverhampton, you can see there's a cluster here uh, between 5 and 8, and also uh, a bit further down as well between 10 and 13. But there is a, there's a huge negative um, around draw nine uh, at Wolverhampton, which would lead you to think there must be something going on as to why eight would be profitable and 10 would be profitable, but nine with a big negative. Um, the other thing to look at is where there's a lot of red. So you can see that both tracks have um, the low draws uh, are, are negative. So it's not just about backing. With these being Betfair SP, you can also lay. So depending uh, on your approach, your favorite approach, you could be backing, looking for you know, horses that come out of um, stalls that have a good strike rate, good success rate. But equally, you could be looking for the horses are given a bad draw um, and they don't necessarily win from those positions as well. So those are a couple of things that instantly catch our eye just purely on the raw data. And as always, you've got to delve in a little bit more. Um, it's not going to be as simple as backing every horse from stall nine will win um, over a long period of time. So what I've done now is um, apply the same pivot table criteria, but instead of looking at the number of runners in the race, I've looked at the, the distance, the race distance. Um, so it might be that that's a factor as well, because obviously the, the, the course dynamics, the course shape, uh, regarding where that the, the actual traps are set up on the, on the course could have an impact on, on the actual outcome of the race as well. So distance might be a factor. So with Wolverhampton, as we said that these were the profitable looking stalls five to eight um, and then what we can do immediately if we hone in here on races over a mile you can see that that is where the bulk of that profit comes from you can see that the race is under a mile there's only a, a negligible amount of money as a profitable outcome on those um, on those distance races but with the with the negative you can see that pretty much across the board, there is a lot of red on these um, first three stalls, regardless of the distance uh, that's being considered here. Um, and then what we want to do as well is I've just broken it down by by the year. So again, looking at Wolverhampton, uh, traps five to eight, you can see that the bulk of that profit was made in 2019. And in fact, if you look at 2019, it was a loss. So as I said, that there is always more to it than initially meets the eye and you do have to do a bit more delving into that. So if you had seen this in 2019 and purely backed every horse that was running from traps five through to eight at Wolverhampton, 
2020, you would have made a loss. Um, so there's got to be a, a reasoned approach um, to, to why you'd make those selections. Having said that, though, you can see that within Wolverhampton, each year, the first three stalls have all led to a, a, a negative. So it could be that there is something in that where you want to investigate further potential lays for each horse in those stalls. But there might be another factor. It might be that um, fancied horses are drawn, um, you know, by luck into the higher number um, stalls. So you could be getting a lot of outsiders in these um, lower lower numbered stalls. So we, what we've done on this fourth tab is look at the average odds. So you can see these are the average odds of the, and this is Betfair odds, uh, Betfair starting price odds. You can see the average for each stall. Now the average for Wolverhampton is fifty, just under fifty four. The reason it's lower than Dundalk is that typically they're they they're, they're smaller fields, so there there's less um, outsiders. You know, all you need is to have a horse <coughs> ranked evens and a horse ranked a thousand. And that gives you an average of you know around 500 so that's why these are typically quite high but if you look at the the um, stalls that we're talking about as being a potential lay ones the average there is 48.6 which is actually lower than the overall average so that doesn't uh, align to the fact that perhaps there are more outsiders being drawn um, in those lower stalls um, as i said with this this is pure um, data manipulation we've just split this into four very basic um, tables which can be um, an indication and a starting point as to where you might look to find a profitable wedge from the stall or draw